Okay. So I'm McKinley Strong. I'm going to give a presentation about disaster preparedness. Um, it's this is this slide is from this part presentation is from Ema. I'm just passing the message along. Okay. There are many different types of disasters that can happen. There's natural, there's man-made, there's medical. Um, next. Um, so this is just to look on what's going to be on the slide. There's fire safety, disaster medical operations, light search and web rescue, CERT organization, uh, disaster psychology, CERT and terrorism. Okay, so this is for, this is more of what we're doing. Um, we're going to identify roles and responsibilities for community preparedness, describe types of hazards that, that affect community, people, health, and buildings or infrastructure, undertake personal and organizational preparedness action, describe functions of CERC. Um, the key priority is Lessening the impact of disasters, or as my sir instructor Lisa said, save as many people as we can in the least amount of time. Um, and critical, it's critical that all community people, everybody, not just community members, but everybody takes steps to prepare for disasters. Um, this is effective when addressing unique attributes of community and engages the whole uh, community. Uh, the government. The government's responsibility is to develop, test, and refine emergency plans, ensure that our first responders have the appropriate skills and resources. Um, we need to provide services to protect and to assist citizens. Um, so, plans. Um, we need to be able to assign responsibility to organizations and individuals. The fourth lines of authority describes how uh, we, we, need to do, we need to describe how people and property will be protected, and identify personnel, equipment, facilities, supplies, and other resources. Um, so, community leaders um, they have a responsibility to, to participate in the in these community at, um, preparedness activities. Um, we need to participate on local local collaborative planning councils. Um, they need to identify and inter integrate sorry, um, appropriate resources into government plans, um, ensure that facilities, staff, and customers are served and prepared. Um, so the public, we all have to take part in it because if we notice that there's something wrong, we have to say something, see something, say something. Um, we need to learn about the worst mornings and evacuation routes. We need to, at least the majority of us need to take training so we know what to do when something is to happen. Um, we need to practice skills and personal plans like what will you do in your, if there's an emergency in your house, what will you do, what can you get out of your neighborhood, stuff like that. Um, we need to network and help others. You should always have an emergency contact for if anything were to happen or like a place to meet up if you all get separated. Um, we need to give feedback to the community, um, report suspicious activity, or volunteer. Like if you see a suspicious backpack in like, like a public place, like it could just be a lost backpack or someone could have put it there, you never know. So you always let someone know. Um, so the goal of the citizen corps, or but <laughs> it's to make communities safer, more prepared, and resilient. The Citizen Corps Council bring government and community leaders together. Councils ensure emergency plans are more effective, more effectively reflect the community because you would have a different plan for like for New York than you would have for like uh, the rural, rural, rural Virginia things. Um, there's several disasters, natural, technological, intentional, and then there's medical, so like, they don't list it, but like I said, my instructor Lisa has also added some things. Key disaster elements, 
They are relatively unexpected. Like, by relatively unexpected, like if you live in Tornado Alley, you probably, you know that it could happen, but yeah. Anyways, so emergency person personnel can be overwhelmed, especially if they are, if one of their loved ones is in the area of the doctor. Um, lives, health, and the environment are endangered greatly. The local hazards and vulnerabilities. Um, uh, they uh, identified the most common disasters that occur. The, um, it identifies possible hazards with the most severe impact. Um, it, you, well, you need to. They also need to. Well, we also need to consider recent or historical impacts of like tornado alley. Um, you need to identify susceptible locations in the community for specific hazards. Like if you live near the coast, you're obviously prone to flooding. Um, you need to consider what you want to expect from the disruption of services. Um, so some results are the police are ad address incidents of grave public safety, fire fires, suppress major fires, EMS, handle life threatening injuries, and lower priority needs are met in other ways. You may not have the opportunity to select what type of direction you're in when the disaster occurs. Engineers buildings have are well better suited for disasters than a tiny little shack. <laughs> Types of damage vary by structure. Differences in hazard and mitigation between single family homes and multiple family units are linked to home Hazards from home fixtures. Gas lines disrupted, displaced water heaters or ranges. Damage from falling bullets, dishes, or other cabinet contents. Electric shock or injury from displaced appliances or office equipment. And fire from faulty, faulty wiring, overloaded plugs, or frayed electric cords. And here are some pictures. Here are some pictures. Um, so, to, so preparing for a disaster, you need to know your uh, alerts, the, what you're prone to, warning systems, evacuation route, and structure you plan. Or like shelter in place, or you have to get up and go. Um, there, are, you have to consider elements of disaster preparedness. You have to address specific needs for yourself and the people you know, like medicine. Are there certain medicines you need? And if so, how can you make sure you have them ready for you? Um, so protective action. You need to assess the situation. Um, get, just decide to stay or change locations, like I said, shelter in place or get up and go. Uh, you have to seek clean air and protect breathing passages. One of the things that I was also taught was getting your, it, it's pretty much known as your wet cough. So you can breathe. Or you can get one of the breathing masks. Those are good to have if you don't like using wet cloths. Um, protect from debris and signal trap, which is why you should have lights and, and flashlights and stuff in your emergency pack if you can get to. Um, you need to remove contaminants and practice good hygiene. Another thing is when you, like, if there's an area prone to, like, your stove, if it's prone to fire, you shouldn't keep your like baking soda or fire extinguisher right next to it because if it's too close, you can't get it because the fire is gonna be in the way. You, you need to have it close enough to where you can get it quick, but not so close that you can't get it because it's right there. Um, so sheltering, shelter in place, ceiling or room. You have to identify the room. You have to decide how long you have to stay. Today for several hours. Um, you have to have supplies there, which is why you should have an emergency backpack. Um, shelter for extended stay. So stay for several days or up to two weeks. Store emergency supplies for mass care or <coughs> community shelter. Do you need to go to a community shelter? That's when you take your emergency backpacks, um, three day disaster kits, and they, and, but the shelter supply most provide most supplies. Sorry. You have to develop a plan. Mm -hmm. A plan. Um, 
you you have to decide if you get separated where are you going to meet are you going to meet to uh, at the mailbox across the street or are you going to like go to a neighbor's house um, you would get out of state chicken contact because if the entire state is affected I, there's obviously no one in state that can help you so probably like a relative or family outside of the state that can help you with also good backup emergency contact um, well you have to Extended stay, shelter in place, or evacuate. Mm. How how will you escape your home, workplace, school, place of worship, or wherever you are? You should always be thinking about that. Um, what route and plan A and plan B and plan C and all that good stuff will you use to evacuate your neighborhood? You have transportation. Did you practice your plan? Most people make it, but they don't practice it and. But yeah, when it comes time, they don't because it's not muscle memory. They freak out, forget their plan, chaos happens. Yeah. Um, so if you when you if you have to escape, you have to consider the needs of children and individuals with disabilities. Like if you need certain medicine, or do you need your wheelchair, and how fast can you get it out? <laughs> Inform all family members or office coworkers of the plan in case something were to happen. One practice escape drills. Um, so preparing for disaster. Mitigation is the reduced protection of loss of life and property by lessening the impact of the disasters. Any activity that prevents an emergency or reduces effects. <laughs> so members should have adequate homeowners coverage and flood insurance or the appropriate insurance for your area. So non-structural hazard mitigation, anchor heavy furniture, obviously, that's one, really, that's a good way to do it. Uh, secure appliances and office equipment. It's a hurricane storm shelter, especially if you're in a hurricane prone area. Childproof cabinet doors. Locate and label gas, electricity, and water shut off. And a good tool to have in case of an emergency is this. It can be used to shut off your gas and water, pry open doors, break windows, cut through like tall grass if you need it. It's a good thing to have. So other mitigation measures are do bullet house since two foundations. You don't want your house to be pulled apart. Install trusses or hurricane straps to reinforce the roof. Strap tanks and chimneys, strap mobile homes, sewers lab, raise utilities, and build a safe room. Another thing is there are we don't not a lot of people talk about this, but if 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 you're, it's your soil. Like, some people like really want a garage, but the soil is not very right great. Like, I remember my mom telling me the story of someone's house started sinking because they had a garage, not a garage, a basement. And uh, it wasn't the right type of soil for a basement. So their house started sinking. One of their, one of their kids didn't wake up and sink with the house. You also gotta consider your environment. You know, yeah. The kid down. Yeah. Some sort of scouts. He sunk the house. house. And we got a new one. Just he never woke up. So, do you think he, he died? Maybe he was like. All right, moving on. <laughs> yeah. McKenna, take it away. It's McKenley. Uh, McKenley, I'm sorry. Okay, so fortify your home. There are different non-structural hazards to fortify against home fires. Landslides or mudslides and wildfire, wildfires. Okay, so we have to get involved. Preparedness requires active participation from all, from politics to a homeless man on the street. Um, so you have to talk to your friends and family about the hazards, especially those that are prone to your area. Um, ask about emergency planning outside the home, especially if your school doesn't have a system or if it's a very bad system. Like if a fire were to happen and their plan is to take you out into a fenced yard, 
and there's there's an obvious problem with that, especially with dry our dry Texas grass. Um, make sure that those in charge have a plan. And something else, you have to know when to step up and when to step down. Everyone has a thing where they want to be a leader, but if there's too many people telling other people what to do, it's chaos. So yes, being a leader is good, but it's also important to know when to step down and let someone else take it, take charge. Too many chiefs, not enough Indians. Mm -hmm. yeah. Training provides skills needed to help others, and, and you have to keep up. You have to keep your skills current or like, update your knowledge. <laughs> um, a good thing to have is. Uh, is a handbook in your emergency bag, not just sitting on your counter. So that way you can take it, you know how to stop a flea, you can first a lot of things, you can, um, yeah, when you decide to attempt a rescue, is it too dangerous? If you if you go into a collapsing building, is it the building's collapsing and there's someone in there, you don't go in there because when, if the building collapses, you get go from one victim to two victims, and another hurt person is the last thing you need. Um, okay. Um, so, CERT is the community emergency response team. Basically, you join that, you're the first responders that go in before the first responders. CERT goes in and sets up for first responders. Like, they tag anyone that needs medical assistance quickly. Um, people that can wait a little bit, but it can go from bad to worse. And people that have something like, like maybe just a scrap on, scrape on their arm, but it's not that bad. But it will still need to be checked for.